This lesson is titled Inverse Relations and Functions. In this example, we're going to graph the relation 4, 3, 3, 2, and negative 5, negative 3. 4, 3 is a point. If we start at the origin and we go right 4, and up 3, we'll have the point 4, 3. 3, 2 is a point, right 3, and up 2. Negative 5, comma, negative 3 is a point left 5 and down 3. So there's our relation. It's just three points. Don't draw a line through this because it didn't ask us to draw um, any kind of uh, continuous function. It just asked us to graph the relation of these three points. In this example, we're going to state the domain and range and inverse of the relation. The domain, recall, is basically all the values that x can be. In this case, x is only 4, 3, and negative 5, so that's our domain. The range is all the values, then, that y can be, or actually take on. In this case, 3, 2, and negative 3. The inverse of a function just takes the domain values and, and switches them with the range values. Range values. So instead of uh, 4, 3, we get 3, 4. Instead of 3, 2, we get 2, 3. And finally, instead of negative 5, negative 3, we get negative 3, negative 5. So there's our first inverse. You try. State the domain, range, and inverse of the relation. Pause the video. I'll give this a try. And when you're ready to check your answer, press play. Okay, the domain, negative 2, 6, and 3. The range, you should have gotten 3, 2, and negative 2. And the inverse, just uh, switch all the x's and y's for each point. And you should do well on that. In this example, we're going to draw a mapping a diagram or a mapping for the relation 3, 5, negative 4, 6, and 3, 8. So to do this, we're going to create uh, two regions. One region will hold the domain values. That will be on the left. One region will hold the range values, that'll be on the right. So the domain is just uh, negative 4 and 3. Notice the 3 is repeated here. We have a 3, 5, and a 3, 8. So we only show the 3 once in the mapping diagram. The range, we have 5, 6, and 8. And now we have to do the map. Negative 4 maps to 6 for the point negative 4, 6. 3 maps to 5 and to 8 for the points 3, 5, and 3, 8. That's a mapping diagram. I guess if you wanted to be a little more uh, specific, you could put a D or a domain up here and an R or a range here. You try to draw a mapping diagram of uh, 2, 6, 4, 6, and 6, 8. Okay, here's my two regions, my domain, 2, 4, and 6, my range, 6 and 8. 2 maps to 6, 4 maps to 6, and 6 maps to 8. Try another mapping diagram. Okay, my domain, just 3 and negative 4. My range, 6 and 8. Negative 4 maps to 6, and 3 maps to 6, and 8. Alright, now we're going to get down to a little more nitty gritty on the the inverse functions. We're given three functions here and we're asked to find the inverse of each function. So this first function, f of x equals 3x plus 1, I want to find the inverse. With points, that's real simple. You just switch the x's and the y's. Well, that's kind of what you do with, um, with equations too. This is f of x, which is um, basically y, and this is x. The way to do this algebraically is you we're going to think of this as y equals 3x plus 1. And then you're going to switch the positions of the x and the y. Everything else stays put. So the only thing is, is x is going to go where the y is, y is going to go where the x is. The 3 plus 1 stay put exactly where they are. So I've got x is equal to 3y plus 1. And now we just get y by itself again. If we get y by itself again, we'll have an inverse. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. We would subtract 1 from both sides, and then we would uh, divide by 3. So y is going to equal x minus 1, all divided by 3. Therefore, my inverse function, f inverse, notice this little negative 1 is not an exponent. It's part of a label saying that f inverse is the inverse of f of x. 
So that's a new uh, notation for us. F inverse equals x minus 1 over 3. This function will undo everything this function does. For example, let's try plugging a 2 into here. If I plug a 2 in here, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Well, notice what happens if I plug a 7 in here. 7 minus 1 is 6 divided by 3 is 2. I get back this 2. That will happen no matter what number I would plug in for x over here. If I take the answer and plug it in for x over here, I'll get back the number I started with. That's what inverse functions do. They undo each other. So let's go ahead and uh, work this next one together. I need to think of this as y is equal to, uh, let's change colors here so we don't clash with what's going on up there, x cubed plus 1. So when I do the change, I have to leave everything alone, just change x and y. The cube even stays put. So the x equals y cubed plus 1. Solving for y, I'm going to add 1 to both, or subtract 1 from both sides, equals y cubed. And then we'll go ahead and cube root both sides. So the cube root of x minus 1 is equal to y. Therefore, f inverse, actually this is g, g, let's erase that, that's just terrible. g inverse of x, g inverse of x is equal to the cube root of x minus 1. Let's test this out. Let's see, if I put in a 2, I get 2 cubed is 8 plus 1 is 9. So I put in a 2. Let's try putting that 9 I just got into here. 9 minus 1 is 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. I get that 2 back. So it does undo each other, at least for the value 2. And I have a pretty good feeling it'll do it for all of them. Let's do this last one together. y is equal to x squared. If I change the x and y, leave everything else alone. x equals y squared. If I solve for y, y would end up equaling positive or negative root x. Well, notice the x has to be positive which is good x has to be positive so I can take the square root of it here and uh, so that gives me f of x actually h we're dealing with h h inverse of x would equal positive or negative root x and there you go we have inverse functions That's our learning target for this lesson. I'll see you in class.